And of course, they would have all this damn noise behind me. What up, what up, what up, what up? Welcome to a, I don't know what the hell happened earlier, but YouTube said, no, nah, Chris, no, nah, bro, we ain't having that. It's one of them days. It might as well be a damn Monday because got noise in the background. YouTube saying, fuck you and all that other good stuff. But you know what? There's a reason why I call everything I do determined because damn it, we are determined to make this shit happen. Like I said, I don't know what the hell happened earlier. All of a sudden, I'm minding my own business, just, you know, doing what I do. Then all of a sudden, YouTube says, nah, bruh, nah, nah, not today, sir, not today. But, damn it, we're here. Thank y'all for joining me. I know I sent the link out to a couple people, and of course, the link that I had before is no longer active. So that means, as they say, you go to war with the army you have. Shout out to everybody in the chat. What up, what up, what up? Let me get my shit together, man. I say... I tell you that I am just like completely thrown off. It's like shit. You know how you get ready to do that thing? You get ready to do it, and all of a sudden it's like, uh uh, nah, bruh, nah. That's kind of like what happened earlier. So, what up? What up? Talk that talk, sis. One of my favorite um, uh, fellow podcaster. Shout out to you. But we're here. We're going to get this shit on track. We're going to get this thing going, and we're going to have a fun show tonight. Disregard all that noise in the background. I don't know why they chose of all times right now to start working on a damn truck outside of the studio. But, as I said, you go to war with the army that you have. Y'all are probably wondering who I am. Who am I? I am Christopher Marklin. I'm an author, podcaster, content creator. Uh, and and just lover of love, which is one of the reasons why I do this show. Um, and speaking of shows tonight, you know what? You know what? Before we get started, before we get started, let me get my mind right. Let me get everything going because my bad eye, right, man. I got a lot of shit that just started all at once. And I'll be honest with you, I'm a little discombobulated. Um, so, as always, I, you know I got to shout out my sponsor. Oh, not that one. That's not. Okay, hold on. You know I got to shout out my sponsor. The Black Candle Box. Shout out to the Black Candle Box for supporting your boy, even as we stumble and bumble along. Anyway, the Black Candle Box. Um, Y'all, I've never really been big into candles. I've always liked them. But as I got older and as I started to appreciate the finer things in life and was able to actually spend some money and, you know, actually had some money. Because, I mean, for a while there, just, you know, it was a little bit of personal description, you know, personal information. You know, I used to try to be a gigolo, but for whatever reason, I really couldn't get a, get anything going because the ladies that I, you know would actually hire me after they got finished and they'd throw the quarters and shit at me, I, I realized that it wasn't the way to go. So what I did instead was I decided, you know, to, to go a different route and 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 I changed my life and, and I started making some money and I was like, oh okay, there's more to life than than, than what I was doing before. And then I realized, huh, there's something about candles. Something relaxing about it. Something about the aura, just having them candles all lit up and stuff like that. And all of a sudden, I stumbled into a friend of mine. She's like, yo, Chris, this is what I do. I was like, you know what? Let's check it out. Then we got to talking, and I realized, yo, this is all right. What I like about the Black Candle Box is that, yo, these things are actually pretty damn good. You know, a lot of times, and they're, they're affordable. You know, I'm, I'm Jamaican. What can I say? I'm frugal. And if somebody calls us Jamaicans cheap, we fight them. Anyway... So, as you know, I sampled some of her candles. I was like, yo, I'm digging these. And then we got to talking, and next thing you know, she's a uh, sponsor of the show. So, with all that being said and done, theblackcandlebox.com. Now, if you use the promo code VCM Show, you will get a 15% discount over all purchases, $25 and higher. Now, it's, it's, it's good stuff. And tonight's fragrance, one of my favorites, is if I find my damn um, lighter. Tonight's uh, is coconut mango. Now, the owner of the Black Candle Box, she's been fussing at me all week saying, Chris, cut the damn wick. So I cut the wick. <laughs> so like I said, tonight's fragrance is coconut mango. And now that we got that out the way, let's see. As y'all, oh, you know what? Let's make sure we get this. Y'all, this is an adult show. We are grown. Some of y'all might be sexy. Some of y'all are grown and sexy, right? 
So what we're going to do is I want to always put that disclaimer out. This is a grown show. That means I'm going to be saying some shit. I'm going to be talking with a little potty mouth. Hopefully my mama ain't tuned in because she's going to be like, oh, my child. Anyway, so we're going to be having an adult show tonight. This is an adult discussion. And what we're going to be talking about tonight, y'all, is it's a simple question. Do you know how to date? Do you know how to date? Now, one of the things, one of the many things that I do is I do uh, reviews for a TV show called Ready to Love, right? And on that show, and if you want to, if you haven't already done, in fact, before we even get going, y'all, please, we got it. We're going to be, I'm going to be saying it all night. We're going to have to tickle the algorithm. What I need y'all to do, close out a little chat window, go over there and hit the like button. If you don't like what the hell I'm saying, hit the dislike button. I don't give a damn. Just touch it somewhere. Just tickle that damn algorithm to let them know that yo this dude is doing some things so please make sure you like if you haven't already done so subscribe and if you haven't already done so please make sure you tell a friend that yo this dude christopher's on his thing now let's get into it so like i said i do a do a review re, uh hold on let's try that again i do a review of a tv show called ready to love and on, the, on this particular season, there's one gentleman in particular goes by the name of Corey. Now, Corey is known as Mr. First Date. Corey is known as Mr. Copy and Paste. Corey is known as a man that, you know, he's, he's built the reputation. Even though we're just three, um, we're in episode three of the show, this dude has a reputation of going after, you know, seeking a first date with women. However... He, not just him, but a couple other women, um, people on the show, it seems they don't know how to date. And that got me to thinking as I was watching the show, working on my, on my review for the past episode, I realized it's like, yo, what the hell is going on that it seems that people just don't know how to damn date anymore, all right? To me, it doesn't make any damn sense because dating is one of them things. It's like, yo, it, it's, not that, it's, it's, it's not that difficult However, it's pretty damn difficult, okay? Um, so it, it got me to thinking about what is it that is, why is it so difficult, not just for people to engage in, in relationships, but for you to even get to the relationship aspect of, 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 of you know, moving forward in it to get to the relationship stage, let me put it that way, when people can't even date in the first place, people can't even do the first date, you know, initiate the first date, go on the first date, perform on the first date, go do what they have to do on the first date. And, and it's like they are struggling, literally struggling to do those things. And I'm thinking to myself, why the hell is it so hard? And then I kind of, the, the more I sat and thought about it, I realized that the problem is people really don't know the rules. Okay. Now, m maybe the rules might be all right. M maybe I'm 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 a bit strong. I, I don't know. M maybe that's that's just the the, the wrong word. M maybe that's what it is. You know, maybe it's not necessarily rules per se. Maybe I'm like, okay, Chris, you 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 got it twisted. So I really, as I sat and thought about, it, I'm like, you know what? We're gonna have to do this show and talk about why is it that people can't date? Why is it people don't know how to date? So the first thing I wanted to go over, you know, as we get into this topic is what I did. And I came up with 10, 10 rules. You know, I, didn't, I did a little bit of research and I compiled certain things. And these are the 10 rules that I came up with, right? Or the 10 do's and don'ts. Now, the first one is, number one, do try to look your best and be punctual on dates, all right? Do try to look your best and be punctual on dates dates it's not that damn hard okay it's not that hard if you make an appointment at, if you you say yo shawty check this out man i'm gonna pick you up at seven o'clock on friday okay we're gonna i'm gonna be there at seven o'clock on friday there's nothing friggin worse to me and it, and, and I, i'm not sure what it is we got apple well you know smart watches we got smartphones laptops email this that and a damn third that's got every friggin calendar feature on it right we got alarms because lord knows in the morning at a minimum i got four alarms y'all know what it is y'all hit that snooze button how many times how many times y'all hit the snooze button let me know in the chat section right at a minimum you hitting that, that snooze um alarm four times well maybe three 
All right. So you know you 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 already know you have that that calendar feature and say, yo, I'm going out on Friday. So it doesn't make any sense that you know that all right, I have this this date set up for Friday or Saturday at seven o'clock, and here it is at six forty five. Hey, I'm gonna be late. Or, hey, I know you're gonna be picking me up at seven, but I'm not gonna be ready, or some nonsense like that, all right? It's, 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 it's as simple as that. You know, it's, it's like I said, if, if, you are going, if you're gonna be on that date, then you need to be punctual, and you need to look your best. So that means that, okay, if I know that I have this date at such and such time, then I gotta get my damn hair done. If I got a date at seven o'clock, I'm not gonna be waiting until 6.45 to go to, go to the barber shop, all right? Number two, do try to have fun when dating. Do have fun when dating, okay? Don't try do. Have fun when dating. And what that means, put your friggin' phone up. Have fun, all right? If it's something you've never done before, try to engage in it. Try to, you know, it's, 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 it's a new activity, then embrace it for what it is. If you don't like it, all right, fine. You tried it. You don't like it. Keep it pushing. But at least try. At least try. Do have fun on the date because no matter what it is you're doing, you're going to have some. There's going to be something entertaining for you to do on the damn date. All right? <laughs> I mean, come on, y'all. It's, it's, it's honestly, it's not that, it's, it, to me, it's not that difficult. Do flatter and compliment your date. And this kind of goes back to number one. If you are looking your best, then compliment that, you know, then you sh if, if you know that you went out and, and you're looking your best, then you would hope that your date would compliment you, all right? Now, I ain't got to worry about getting that fresh cut. You know, I'm working on it. I'm working on it, but, you know, I ain't got to worry about getting that fresh cut. But if I went, if it went, you know, you get, get a haircut, ladies, say, damn, baby, I, I like your hair. You know, you're you looking nice with the haircut, whatever. Same with us fellas. If you know that she went out and got a new dress or whatever the hell it is, compliment her compliment her all right um number four be interesting and be interested again if you put that phone away and you're able to focus on what that person is saying it's a whole lot easier for you to be interested in what they're saying and at the same time if you're going to take someone out on a date take take that person somewhere so that at least there's something interesting to talk about the huge dating mistake that people make, for, especially on first dates, is going out to the damn movies. Because quite honestly, ain't nobody going to be talking in the movies. Black folk, I'm talking to y'all. Y'all my people, but damn it, we will talk in the movie, right? <laughs> so, but that's not the place to be trying to be interesting and having conversations. So, how was your day today? No, not during the damn movie. But if you go out and you engage in an activity, then once again, that's going to be something at least that you can talk about and be interested in. Number four. Oh, excuse me. Oh, my bad. We're on number five. Now, it doesn't always work out. It doesn't always work out. Them first dates don't necessarily work out. But guess what? If you're not interested, let that person know. Let that person know. You know, like, hey, I had fun. Thank you for taking me out. However, I don't think this is, you know, I, I, I don't want to pursue this. Because what happens a lot of times is, what happens so many times is that people realize that, hey, you know what? This person ain't necessarily the, the right one for me. But I like that restaurant they took me to. Or I like the activity that we engaged in. Or, and this is something, we're going to get into this one. In fact, let's just go ahead and get into it. Number six, do date the type of people that you like and are attracted to. Do date the type of people that you like and are attracted to. Y'all, as I said, in fact, let me, let me put this thing up one more time because y'all going to learn today. Before I say what I'm going to say, this is an adult show, so I'm about to say some adult shit. Y'all, if you don't feel like fucking them, don't go on a date with them. Simple as that. If you are not interested in that person sexually, do not go out on a date with them. I'm speaking a lot to y'all ladies because I'm just saying, y'all know instantly when, whether that dude is smashable or not. Us dudes, as long as she got a pulse, you know, maybe alive. I mean, as long as she got, you know, a pulse pretty much works. Because at the end of the day, we can turn them lights on. Let me not get too, too far down the rabbit hole. But what I'm saying is if you're not interested in having sex with that person, then y'all don't go out on a date with them. 
If you're not physically attracted to that person, do not go out with that person. You're wasting their time and you're blocking your blessings, meaning you are spending your time with somebody when you could be focused on the right one. It's a simple thing. If you're not interested in that person, do not go out on a date with them. Don't do it. Number seven, do, po do stay positive even if the date doesn't end well. Like I said, not everything is going to be a love connection or a match made in heaven. Sometimes, it, you know, it isn't. It, it just is not going to work out that way. And if that's the case, you got to stay positive. I know a lot of times, especially if you crushing on a person, I'm speaking to my fellas out there, you crushing on a person and it's like, man, I've been wanting to take her out for a minute. And then it seems like everything goes to shit. The car break down or you get a flat tire or, or all kinds of things. And shit happens. Life is going to life. Me and the wife, we call it left field. Shit is going to happen. Shit is going to come out of left field and just throw things all into disarray. But you got to stay positive. We got a, um, a friend of ours and, and he, he started, uh, they, they went out on their first date. And the car got um, not impounded, but when they parked, they went into the restaurant. When they came out, somebody had locked the gate where the car was, so they had to jump the fence and do all kinds of stuff to get the car. Throughout the whole thing, the lady that he took out, she was like, yeah, let go. And she climbed the fence with him. She was a rider. She could easily be like, yeah, I'm going to catch me an Uber. you let you figure this out. But instead, she was a rider, and next, they're still together to this day. Stay positive because life is going to life and shit is going to happen. It's, 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 there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Shit's going to happen. Number eight, allow dating to take you places you've always wanted to visit. Especially wanted to visit. Oh, I misspelled that. My bad, y'all. <laughs> you always wanted to visit in your own city. All right. That kind of goes back, ties into number four because... <laughs> that kind of number eight ties into number four. All right. In other words, I live in Atlanta. Y'all drop in the comment section where y'all are from. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through that in a minute. But no matter where you are, there's always something going on, some kind of activity, something. Think about it, y'all. In a couple more days, it's Halloween. Somebody's throwing a Halloween party. Maybe a sexy Halloween party, maybe a lame one, maybe, a, you know, whatever. There's their Halloween parties popping off. There's always some kind of spoken word, some kind of something. Also, also, for me, the best dates that you can go on, and I'm talking to my fellas out there, is taking her in to do something that you are interested in. Like me, I love car, um, you know, uh, racing cars or whatever, like K1 or um, Andretti. I'm into aircraft. This, I, I love planes. I love aviation. This may sound silly as shit, but if you go to the airport, you can actually do something close to the airport and talk about planes. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's so many different things that, that you can do. But if you're going to go on a date, allow the date to take you somewhere new. And then that kind of sort of goes back into number four. Be interesting and interested. If you are in your element, meaning you take her or y'all go some, you, you take the, per, the person out to a place that you like then you're going to be interested in it because now you're in your element. I'm not saying take them to work. I'm not saying if you're a real estate agent, I ain't saying take them out on, on a showing. I'm not saying that. My agent's out there. I'm not saying that. Y'all know, hey, check this out. Um, I got a showing at eight, so I figured that we can just do that and then you can, you know, no, don't do that. Don't do that. But what I'm saying is if you go somewhere that you can do that, you know, th that you're interested in, interested in doing in your city, it's going to expand both of y'all, all right? Number nine, dating requires positive action, so go out and meet people. Key word in that is go out. Now, I get it. COVID-19, coronavirus, all that, that, that just, whew, that threw a monkey wrench in everybody's dating plans. However, even before that, people were pretty much swiping left, swiping right, and then wondering why love doesn't find them. Or they're going to the same damn places and expecting a different result. If you go to that same restaurant, sit at the same damn bar, how are you going to expect to meet some, someone different? However, same, the same people that go to that same, same restaurant, same bar, same whatever, when they're invited out with a friend, hey, you want to go hang out with us tonight? No, nah, I don't want to do that. My, my, my hair ain't ready. Or blah, blah, blah. No. 
get out of your comfort zone. Because if you want to meet somebody new, it might help if you go and do something new. Get out of your comfort zone. Try different things. You cannot keep going to the same places, doing the same things, and expecting different results. Oh. And last but not least is do surround yourself with positive, like-minded people. Surround yourself with positive, like-minded people. I say it all the time. Your single friends are going to keep you single. So if you... Now, I'm not saying you be all up under that married couple. I'm not saying that, you you know, the couple's booed up, you all all up under them all the time. But going back to what I just said, if you got a, a, a married couple, they're like, yo, we're going to go hang out. It's going to be us and a whole bunch of other single people. I don't want to be the third wheel. No, get your ass out there. And at the same time, go do different things with, a, with different groups of people, and, but surround yourself with positive, positive, like-minded people positive like-minded people all right so if, if you're not hanging around people who are positive <laughs> if you're not hanging around with people who are positive guess what you're gonna have some serious ass problems all right so and, and we're gonna get into this a little bit more as we talk as we get into the conversation but y'all there is no reason, no reason whatsoever for you not to, if you want to meet someone, if you want to get out there and date, then so be it. Now, those are th those 10 rules, all right? Those, those, these 10 rules right here, that's just basically the initiation on it. However, now there's a certain part of it when you're actually on the date. Fellas, I know, I know, I know. Women are independent. I don't need no man for nothing. I can hear y'all throwing bricks at the computer. I'm just saying. However, fellas, or, you know, well, I know it's a different area. But, fuck it, fellas, open her door. If she's on a date with you, she shouldn't touch a damn door. And ladies, if he's holding the door for you, say thank you and appreciate it. Don't, don't rush to open the damn door, your own door, because you don't need, no. Certain things, y'all, are time-tested. And, and what it shows is that, okay, if he's attentive to you, then you're attentive to him. And at the very onset of things, you're setting, you're establishing certain things. Both of y'all are. As a man or, you know, as a dominant person in a relationship, they're showing that, hey, I'm going to be attentive to you, and you are showing I'm going to be receptive to, to him, and then you're going to reciprocate in turn. If it, it, those things are established early and often, it's going to lead to something su successful. But if you don't even at least establish it, then you're going to have issues. Now, don't get me wrong. I know we live in some savage-ass times, and, and it's, 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 it's kind of crazy. I get it. I get it. People going Dutch, you know, you know, dudes getting, you know, you see the stories all the time about dudes getting screwed over where, you know, she's basically just taking them, you know, literally taking them for lunch and just eating a lunch and dipping or that. I get it. I get it. But that's where discernment comes in. And then that, that also goes back to getting, you know, as far as not just texting the person, but calling the person and, and establishing something even before you go out on the first date. Certain things, if, if, if you do them, th do them in order, then that is what's going to help you date more seriously. That's all I'm saying. You've got to do certain things. And one of the key components, if you notice, I keep going back to the phone. I get it. We can't live without them. That, they are everything. Y'all in work, my phone stays buzzing. Somebody's calling me about a listing or I'm calling somebody else. And, you know, it's, it's real estate. That's what we do. But at the same time, if you're interested in that person, then you have to be interested and focused on them. Put the phone down. Ladies, I get it. Take a picture of the damn food. That's what y'all do. Why? I do not know. Why do y'all take pictures of the food? Anyway, anyway, I digress. Take the picture of the food and put your phone down and focus on that person. And fellas, be interesting. There's so many times where dudes don't know how to friggin' talk. Have a conversation. If you are not able to hold a conversation and how are you going to hold her attention and how are you going to hold her and at the same time if you're not as you know conversations you've got to be able to give and take and that right there are those are the, the simple things now i just referenced it earlier as far as you know getting taken advantage of when it comes to the meals if you ask somebody out you pay 
If you ask that person out on a date, you pay. If you ask that, you, what you're saying is, hey, and my real estate agents out there, y'all, y'all back me up on this. We have a concept called earnest money, right? Your earnest money speaks two parts. You paying your earnest money, you're saying, hey, in exchange for this money, I, the buyer, endeavor and, buy, and, and I'm con- contractually obligated to do certain things in the furtherance of purchasing your house. To the seller, them accepting your earnest money means I am gonna take this house off the market. I'm not gonna keep trying to sell it to other people because now I am gonna make sure that you and only you get this money in exchange for for me accepting the earnest money means that I'm gonna sell it to you. That's what your earnest money is. It's it's the first stage of, of, of the contractual obligation for both parties. The same thing goes with dating. If you take that person out, what you're saying is, hey, I want you to give up your time on this day from these hours to at a minimum these hours, and if things go well, maybe even longer. So hey, I am gonna take you out. And then in exchange for that, for that person's time, you are going to cover the expenses of the date. It's a simple thing. But if you all both enter into it saying, all right, I'm going to pay for my own stuff and you're going to pay for your own stuff, there's an impasse. There is no agreement that, hey, my time, your money, let's make it work. You're saying my time, my money, your time, your money. How how the hell are you going to get together? Off the rip, off the rip, you see that there's an imbalance. So what you're saying is, well, damn, I don't want to spend my money on, okay. Fine. Don't go to no damn expensive ass restaurant. Don't go to Fogo de Chow on the first date. You see what I'm saying? Don't do that. Groupon is a beast. That's all I'm saying. Shit, McDonald's. <laughs> Supersize it. Hell, I just had a 10 piece a second. I'm just saying. You don't have to spend a dick, as we used to say in the army, a dick and a wrist. You don't have to spend a lot of damn money to take somebody out on a date. That goes back to uh, number four be interesting. Like I said, you remember, I'm inter- I love planes. So I'm going to, there's a restaurant close by the airport. Cool. And then we can hang out. And as we're driving around, I'm like, yo, you see that right there? That's a Boeing 737-800. That right there is a 777. That right there. Yo, did you know the UPS has a seventh? I want to say it's the eighth largest fleet now. All of those, those are, shit, I get it. I know I can talk about planes, but guess what? I'm not spending a lot of money either if, if I'm budget conscious. So all I'm saying is if you ask somebody out, pay for the date. That person shouldn't have to reach for their wallet unless they, you know, whatever reason. But if you're taking that person out, you cover the expenses on the date. And if that person is taking care of those expenses, you give that person your attention. In other words, if I'm paying for the date and you're busy on your phone, ooh, okay, Facebook, (laughs) let me love this, let me like that, let me share. No, no, that's not, (laughs) that's out of balance. Anyway, I've been running my mouth. I get it. All right. <laughs> let me drop the link for the, 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 the Zoom call right there because let me put this in the chat. Oh, shit. Let me put this in the chat because y'all already going in. I see it now. I see it. I see it. Okay. <laughs> oh, not my. <laughs> I get it. Okay, I get it. I get it. I get it. Most grown women have money for their own date. Fine. I get it. But here's the thing. We're all we're both grown. So, you know, it's one of those things. Yes, you can pay for your own. But remember, remember, it's kind of like uh, Melanie just said, Starbucks. It doesn't have to be expensive. If, if you're worried about your budget, so be it. I get it. Anyway, let me go down the line and see what's going on. Melanie Marie, she says, what's happening? Hello. Hey, how y'all? All All right. Uh, LB. In fact, let me make sure I got this thing set up while I'm busy running my mouth. Oh, okay, cool. My bad, y'all. Trying to get my shit together. Um, Jennifer, hey. Uh, Oh, yeah, that's my uh, sponsor right there. She's got pumpkin pie. Lord knows, right in time for the fall. Mm-hmm. Pumpkin, apple, maple. Oh, okay. Snickerdoodle. Love it. Uh, let's see. 
Because planning a date required effort and intent, which means you have to listen to the person and ask questions. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That right there is, is one of the reasons why I, I, I entitled this, Do You Know How to Date? A lot of times, one of the things that frustrates the shit out of me, I cannot stand this when I hear people saying, so um, when I have these conversations with different, with different people and I hear them saying, I don't know where I'm gonna take her out. Or, I mean, we went on a date and the, the, when he picked me up, he's like, so what you wanna do? That is absolute bullshit. Absolute bovine essence bullshit 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 what uh in essence bullshit 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 what um lb aka latrice just said right there planning a date requires effort and as much as people like to run their damn mouths and talk 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 there is no excuse for you not to know what that person's interested in it's not that difficult and there's this little thing, this brand spanking new, they just came out with it about two weeks ago, right? It, um, they call it a, it's, it's, it's called a search engine or something, but it has a special name. But anyway, what you do is, and if y'all y'all don't believe me, just just if you go and use like your browser, and if you type in, I'm gonna, I'm gonna spell it clear, carefully so y'all can write it down. G-O-O-G-L-E. It's brand new, I, trust me on this. Y'all heard it, y'all heard it here first. You go there and then it's gonna say, what are you searching for? And then you type in stuff and damn it, it'll give you all kinds of information that you ain't, it's amazing. Like I said, I love planes, right? So if you wanted to take me out on a date, if we're, if we're talking and I'm like, yeah, you know, I was really wanna get my pilot license. Oh shit, okay, pilot, where can we go? Did you know that over there at Peachtree Industrial, uh, Peachtree Indust uh, the Cab Airport, there's a restaurant literally right there overlooking the runway hot damn would that not be a good date idea for someone that mentioned to you that they like planes the conversation was there it was mentioned in conversation you're asking questions about that person getting to learn about them so where are you from where you know uh when were you born blah 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 and when they say something then that gives you something and then y'all are giving and taking right so it's like latrice said Planning a date requires effort and intent. That means you have to listen to the person, ask questions, and damn it, you're gonna learn. For a long time, I was under the impression that going to dinner was a date. Nope, that's just dinner. Uh, that's like the first part. Yeah, that's the first part. You go dinner and whatever activity, or if you can, that activity is combined with, with dinner. So for instance, um, what are the, the, those murder mystery shows? Something like that. Once again, Groupon is a beast because if you go on Groupon, you can find some of them things. Let's see, side point, as you mentioned, men hunt. So until they're in a relationship, shouldn't men be the most proficient at dating? Hell yeah, of course. For my Ready to Love fans who, who saw the episode this past weekend, there was one character on the show, that's, uh, her name is Courtney. And as they, as she was interacting with this one particular dude, uh, what's his name, Cornelius, she was giving him all of the, all of the correct signals, right? So in other words, she was making, the, touching his hand, rubbing her, you know, putting her head on her shoulder, laughing, looking at him, direct eye contact, all that good stuff. So if I, as a man, am hunting, that's who I'm going to be going after because obviously I'm gonna, if I want to be interested in the person that's interested in me. So if I'm interested in her and she's laughing, looking at me, making direct eye contact, going back to Latrice's comment, I'm asking questions about, so what are you interested in? Okay, what do you like? What kind of food do you like? Oh, you know what? I'm allergic to shellfish. Yeah, I know. Nah, you know we're having conversations. So now I'm picking up. Okay, she likes shellfish. I mean, she likes seafood. She likes doing this. She likes doing that. Now I can start planning, planning a date. I'm hunting her. And what I'm doing is based on the ammo that she's giving me, that's what I'm using to knock it down. You see what I'm saying? Yes, men hunt, but you got to have the right, the right ammunition if you, if you are trying to <laughs> bag that person. All right, Mel, Mel Marie says dinner and movie dinner and a movie is not date. You can't talk through the movie, you can't talk through the movie, and you can't talk and eat. Even if you go to something like um, Studio Movie Grill, right? Or there are a couple other um, cin uh, what's it, Cine Bistro, a couple other um, movies, movie theaters that you can actually eat, and they have some pretty damn good food at that Cine Bistro too. Um, but anyway, they have different things like that where you can. Um, eat while you're watching a movie, but you cannot talk. 
you can't really communicate with that person. The only person you really talk to in those restaurants is damn the server that's coming to get, take your order and bring your food. However, if you do an activity, like I said, K1 Speed or Andretti, they have restaurants in there. Food sucks, but at least they have restaurants where if you wanted to sit down and grab something and then go race as an activity, then afterwards you go and have, you know, something else line, you know, lined up for you to go eat. Now, going back, just even that idea right there. All right. If you're going to take a person out to say a K1 or an Andretti, what you have to do ahead of time is set the shit up. Because there's no, when you get there, you have to fill out waivers and do certain things. If you take care of that stuff ahead of time and make, you know you're picking her up at 7, so why not reserve a race for 7.30? All right? Remember the first rule I said is make, be prepared, be punctual, be prepared. If you're taking that person out somewhere, make the reservations. Don't show up and be like, yeah, uh, y'all got space? Hell no, we're booked. We're booked. It's, it's, remember during COVID, they only had X amount of tables. Make the phone call. Going back to the conversation I just said. Okay, she likes seafood. Hey, let me call these different seafood restaurants. Make a reservation because she said she's going to be ready at 7. I'm going to make our reservation at 7.30. So when I pick her up, we drive straight to the restaurant. Boom, boom, boom. And then we have the evening planned out. All right? Those things are what we have to do. Let's see. I wonder how a man views a woman Views a woman's worth to him and what he actually wants from her makes a difference. Ooh. Ooh, I see what you did there. I see what you did there. Um, the simple answer is yes. The simple answer is yes. Going back to what Michelle said earlier, men hunt. And we have Whitney Solier. She says the same thing. Should the man be the, pers the pursuer for the date? The answer is yes. All right. Men hunt. Men hunt. When we want something, we want it. You go after it. You hunt. However, if I'm hunting rabbit, I'm not going to use the same ammunition as if I'm hunting a deer. And I'm not going to use the same ammo as if I'm hunting an elephant, right? I'm still hunting, but the, the, the prey that's in front of me, the, the person that's in front of me that I want is, is different. So if the man is hunting, it's up to the woman to be the best possible prey that she can be. I am not going to take, <sighs> fuck it, let go. I'm not going to take some random ass broad to Fogo to Chow because there's a certain thing such as sophistication. There's a certain thing such as being worth it. However, I'm not going to take that sophisticated woman to American Deli. There's certain things that dictate you behave a certain way. And on the flip side, if you know that you are up here and you should, you know that these particular places are worthy of you, then if that person says, hey, let's go out, and that person, the dude picks you up, so what you wanna do? Oh, okay, this is your date, all right? Off the rip, you know that dude's not, he's not locked and loaded. So how the, how the fuck can he hunt you? Ladies, you know that. If you accept that, then, God help you. You're going to get what you're going to get. At the same time, don't overvalue yourself either. All right? Just because you you saw the latest, somebody posted it on Twitter or, or Instagram, I went to this restaurant, and you know damn well you can't even pronounce Follette Mignon, but you think that I'm you want to get a top-tier steak from, um, what's his name, Salt Bay? Come on now. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. So, yes, a man is supposed to pursue and make sure that you are worth the pursuit. Remember, it's two ways. It, it, it's, it's two parts to this. To, to what, remember what I was saying? It's two parts to this. The man is pursuing. You have to know how to be pursued. Uh, Carrie says, that's where men today go wrong. A date doesn't, doesn't equate to dinner and a movie. Yeah. Ah. Uh, uh. No, you know what? You're 100% right. And like I said, this actually started from, oh boy, on, on the TV show. 
this started from from uh the dude on on um on uh what's the name of that damn show ready to love Corey. this started with him because my man he was constantly talking about you know going on the first date the first date the first date and even when he had women literally in front of him literally in front of him he didn't know how to handle himself he did not know how to handle himself when he went on these dates at all so yes men pursue but god damn it can you at least you know one fellas know how to hunt and two know how to pursue a woman it's not that hard kind of sort of kind of sort of all right let me go back through these chats and also y'all keep in mind i just dropped the zoom link so if you wish to join me on the conversation all you got to do is click the link and if you don't want your face shown just let me know um just make sure that you have your audio connected meaning your microphone is hooked up and you don't have any background noise or anything like that so you don't have the tv on you don't have the zoom playing in another window all you got to do is you know what yeah all you got to do is click that link and you should be good to let me make sure that link is correct my bad hold on i'm gonna drop the long link in here the long link <laughs> let's see all right let me go back through these and see what other comments i may have missed Yo, Starbucks. I know that a lot of people now are going on what they call coffee dates. That is something that is um, gaining in popularity. You know, that is something that is gaining in popularity where people are like, hey, you know what? We don't have to go to no fancy ass restaurant. We're going to go on a coffee date. Them Starbucks, you know, personally, I like Dunkin' Donuts myself. I'm just saying, $10 for a cup of coffee is just ridiculous to me, especially when I'm going to put a whole bunch of cream and sugar in it anyway. It's like, what the hell? It makes no sense to me. Yes, I like my coffee light skin. Let's see. I feel the argument about men not wanting to be used for food. to be. I don't know. It happens. It happens because once again, once again, um, yeah, once again, um, if you're not attracted to a person, you know you're not sexually attracted to that person. You know that there shall be no intercoursing with that person within a couple dates. You know good and damn well. And I'm not saying for you to bust it wide open on the first date. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. What I am saying is you, if you know you're not sexually attracted to that person, then damn it, don't go on a date with them. If you are, then you're pretty much using that food for their company and the activity that y'all engage in. Let's see. When you hike, stroll, walk through nature, it forces you to actually have a conversation with your counterpart. That is true. That is true. Let's see. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> you said that that's what you're gonna do? Melly, you're a real estate agent, you're gonna take them to a mansion and call that a date? Hey, I ain't mad at that. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, Miss Milton, you want to have your camera on or you going to keep it off? Uh-oh. Well, you're gone. All right, let's try that again. I don't know what just happened right there, but... Had somebody else... Let's see. Um, I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you. M&K uh, Transit. My man, he said, coffee date. Those are the best. Now, that, once again, that's just a part of the date, all right? Because if not, you're just doing a meet and greet. And that there is a difference. It's a difference with not much of a distinction, but it's truly a difference. Remember, if you're just doing a meet and greet, then all right, you just say, hey, let's just link up here, get some coffee together, hang out, talk. But if, you're, if that is going to be a part of the date, then you need to have an activity lined up as well. Like I said, Groupon is your friend. Uh, let's see. Jennifer, all right. Jennifer says, "I admit I don't know how to date. I expect in I expect inconsistency, so I don't put a lot of energy into it until a, a guy, until you feel the guy is serious and or consistent." Man, that's a catch twenty two. Um, shit. 
uh, we live in a society, and quite honestly, it's um, a bunch of goldfish. We really all do have low attention spans because we have so many things that are taking our attention. And one of the key things is this phone, right? Our, I mean, we're, we're connected. We're constantly, constantly being bombarded with information, right? Everything we do, I mean, keep, think about it. We've got our watches get, telling us what's going on. We have the phone. We have this. We have that. It's, it's so much for us to not stay focused. I will say this. And this is to my fellas out there. We got to put in a little bit more. If you want to achieve a certain outcome, you have to put in the work to get it. Okay. And when it, if, if you are truly trying to be finding the right person, trying to settle down, you've got to be intentional in your approach. If someone is, if you're interested in a certain woman, you got to put in that effort. Now, Jennifer is saying right here that, you know, she doesn't put a lot of energy into it until you feel a guy is serious and or consistent. But how do you know if the guy is serious if you're not really putting in that effort? Because remember, if that man is hunting and there's certain animals that hunt, certain predators that hunt, and they will not eat dead meat. So if you're not putting in the effort, you're pretty much saying, OK, I'm just going to lay here dead. Think about what does eat dead meat. Carrion, right? Well, not carrion. Uh, um, um, animals that prey on just rotting meat. So those are not the top tier predators, right? So if you're going to lay down and be dead until I'm, I'll, I'll perk up when the right person comes along, what's going to happen is you're going to attract the animals that eat dead prey. You're gonna get the 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 bottom of the barrel, the the the, the dudes that's like, hey Shotty, you mind if I stay on your couch for a little bit? You're gonna get those dudes. You're gonna be attracting the dudes that are like, hey, um, let's Netflix and chill. You're gonna be attracting the kind of dudes that, hey, um, I left my wallet. You got this? Those are what you're attracting because if you're not being the type of the type of prey that is worth pursuing then the true, pre the, the true apex predators, meaning the top tier, aren't going to be paying attention to you because when they do say, hey, yo, what's going on? How are you doing? They got to wait three hours for you to respond back. Hell no. No, uh, shit, I know. I'm not waiting no three hours. I mean, I used to do that shit back in the day, but now I'm like, yo, if you know I'm interested in you, I get it. You're working, you're busy, but damn it, again, we always have these shits in our hand, and if it's not, our watch is saying, hey, you got a text from such and such. It is simple for you to be like, hey, I'm glad you hit me up. I'm at work right now, so I'm going to so You can do something to, to get that person's attention. But if you're like, ah, I'll wait till he texts me 10 times before I respond. Mm, mm, can't do that. You got to know you're worth my money. Again, if a man is going to be investing his, his time and resources into you meaning he's going to take you on, he wants to take you on a date all right so before he can invest the, the resources he's going to invest the time so if he's hitting you up get, calling you texting you uh dming you whatever the case may be and he's not getting the kind of responses that show that you are interested in him then just like the shark he's going to butt up against it be like all right this this ain't what i want it's going to swim off and go hunt somewhere else and if it does circle back around to you, it's already done eight somewhere else. So of course now it doesn't have the, the it doesn't have the desire to pursue you as it once did. So it's it's a whole different give and take. So before a man wants to spend that money on you, he puts his time in. And if the time isn't reciprocated, then it's you're gonna run into some problems. Got to know your worth. Uh Let's see. Michelle says, what are your thoughts on the importance of continuing to date your spouse once in a long term relationship? You never stop dating your spouse. You never stop. You never, ever stop dating your spouse. Because last I checked, the world don't stop just because you put a ring on her finger. The last I checked, activities don't stop just because you said yes so therefore if you if if you are if there's a the reason why you got with that person is because they're interesting then you need to continue to show that you're interested in your spouse all right you have got to continually date your your um date your spouse and ladies all right now take your dude out 
Like I said, I'm interested in planes. Let's go to a restaurant or fly somewhere. I don't give a shit. Let's go. You know, you know, I like racing. Let's go do something, right? Ladies, you know what, you know what, to my married ladies out there, you know what your, your husband likes. Lord knows we're not that, <laughs> men are simple. You know what we like. If you know he's in, he's in the football, damn it, it's football season. Here's the thing. It's football season, right? If he's from Atlanta, when, when his high school, when, when is their next game? It's Friday night. You'd be surprised. That's some fun shit. Right? You don't, it's, it's something as simple as a Friday night football game at his alma mater. Man, please. That's just fun. It, so it doesn't require a lot, but it does require you to be intentional. So even if you're married to that person, you can still put in that work and be like, yo, let's go on a date. And fellas, the same thing goes for you. There's a reason why y'all got together. There's absolutely a reason why y'all got together, so you got to do it. I don't know why this thing is not working. Let's see. Melly says, don't be gullible. Do not give someone your attention because they are giving you attention. A man will hunt, but a woman's job is to pick what you want. Yeah. Yeah, but here's the thing. Women, y'all control the WAP. Men, we control the walk. Meaning, yes, a man is going to pursue you because at the end of the day, he's trying to hit. I ain't no if fans or buts about it. We're attracted to you because we likes you and we wants you. We want to have sex with you. That's just how we're built. Now, on the flip side, on the flip side, ladies, yeah, you don't want to give your attention just because they're giving you attention. If you're not interested in that person, don't waste your time. I know all, just about all y'all ladies in here, y'all let me know, how many of the uh, good morning beautiful texts have y'all gotten? How many of those have you, oh man, I love that pic, or send me a pic, them lame ass dudes, right? How many of them people be blown up your spot, your inboxes, your DMs, whatever, and you just ignore them and keep it pushing? However, we talked about this last week when we, um, with the show Shooting Your Shot, right? Where there's certain times you realize, you know what, no, no. Because I, I want to say um, last week we were, when, as we were talking about Shooting Your Shot, there was um, a situation where I think it was Michelle, when she called in, she was saying that there was a guy that was just pursuing her incessantly. And when she finally gave him some time, it was probably one of the biggest mistakes that she made. Right. So if you're if you're not interested in the person man, don't waste your time, don't give somebody that attention. If you know, just because they're giving you attention. All right. It's your job to pick what you want and pick correctly because you have options. And if you don't have options and that goes back to what we were talking about, put yourself in a play in a position to, in fact, get better options so you can have better outcomes. You know what? Let's go over these dating rules one more time. I don't know why this thing is not working. What the hell is going on? All right, let's go over the rules one more time. I'm sorry, I was laughing at Michelle's comment. <laughs> Number one, do try to look your best and be punctual on dates. Y'all, I think a lot of, if you are, if you're not um, showing respect for someone's time, if you're not showing respect for someone's time, then you're basically just not showing respect for them. So be punctual. If you say, hey, I'm gonna pick you up at seven, be there at 6.55. If that person says, hey, I'm gonna be there at seven, be ready at 6.55. Respect that person's time. Be punctual. And when you do show up, look your best. If you know, that, okay, it's going to take me an hour to get dressed and be like, hey, I'm going to pick you up at seven. Nah, you know what? Um, pick me up at eight. So that way you can be punctual. Make sure you have fun when dating. Do flatter and compliment your date. If it's looking good, man, let her know. If them chesticles are popping, be like, yo, well, I don't know. I don't want to do that. 
Keep, yeah, yeah, fellas, keep that one to yourself. I'm just saying. However, you can't say, oh, you're looking good in that dress. I like the cut of that dress. See what I did there? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> be interesting and interested. Like I said, go somewhere interesting. Um, shit, what's that? The, go the damn aquarium. All right. Something like just there's there's so many options where you can where they're interesting things for you to talk about. Michelle, she um put it, uh, earlier. She was like, hey, go do a, a nature walk. There's so many different activities that you can do. All right. Uh, number five, if you don't want to see that person again, let them know in the nicest way possible. Thanks, but no thanks. Yo, I had a great time, but you know what? Thanks, but no thanks. Number six, date the type of people you like and are attracted to. As I said earlier, as I said earlier, just being, keeping it up, keeping it 100. If you don't want to fuck them, don't go out with them. If you do, if you're not sexually attracted to them, do not go out with them. If you are not sexually attracted to a person, if you're not physically attracted to a person, don't go out with them. Don't waste your time. Don't waste theirs. Number seven, do stay positive even when dates don't end well. Like I said, y'all, left field will come at you. And all, sometimes you have the best plan and it just falls apart. Be positive. Shit happens. Stay with it. Uh, number eight, allow dating to take you places you've always wanted to visit in your city. Like I said, Atlanta's got so many different things going on. You'd be surprised, surprised if you go to Eventbrite and just type in Atlanta, things to do in Atlanta, all kinds of shit's going to come up. I mean, anything from uh, independent films or, I mean, there's so many things going on in this, just in this city. If you're not in Atlanta, go to eventbrite.com, type in your city and things to do, you would be surprised. Stuff comes up and you can plan dates accordingly. Um, number nine, dating requires positive action. So go out and meet people. You will not, the odds of you finding the love of your life are not going to happen because you go to one particular dating app, Tinder, Plenty of Fish, uh, Grindr, um, Christian Mingle. It doesn't matter. The odds of you finding that person is not going to happen. And number 10, surround yourself with positive, like-minded people. Yo, hang around positive people. And if they say, yo, I'm going to be doing this, go hang out with them. Go see, you know, see number nine. Go, go out and meet people. But you want to hang with positive people if you want to get positive results. This is so freaking weird. Huh. Uh, Michelle says, how many good morning beautifuls have come across my inbox? Yes, how many? I'm really curious. Oh, you say 525,600 minutes. You know what? How do you kick somebody out of the chat? Let's see. Uh, what up, G-dubs? Yeah, <laughs> I know you were in the original chat, and for whatever reason, I, uh, YouTube decided to be like, yeah, whatever, bro. Whatever, bro. It wasn't nice. But we're here. Thank you for joining the conversation. Let me drop this link one more time because I, I don't know why. It's like... Some people have tried to log in. Y'all let me know if you have any problems with that. And Kimmy Cake 76. This, you're right. This is awesome. This is awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for joining the conversation. So tonight's conversation, y'all, just to recap, is we are talking about dating. All right. Do you know how to date? So let me ask you that. Let me ask that question. I want everybody just to answer a simple yes or no in the chat. Simple question. Do you know how to date? We talked about it a, a little bit earlier. Knowing how to date means, you know, if you initiate the date, there's certain things that you have to do. If you're asking someone out, meaning you're asking that person to forego whatever activity they were doing, even if they just wanted to lay up on the damn couch and butt naked watching, you know, Squid Game, if that's what they wanted to do on their Friday night, but they said, instead of doing that, I am going to spend some time with you, all right? You know that that's what I want to do, okay? So you know that if you're asking that person out, you're paying for the date. And on the flip side, do you know how to date, meaning that person has asked you out, 
you've accepted and now you're sitting on the date you done took pictures of the food because for whatever reason y'all women like taking pictures of food and now you're just sitting there texting that same picture out to all your friends and this dude is sitting there looking at you like oh okay um all right okay so yes or no do you know how to date oops not yay that's kanye yes Simple as that. Do you know how to date? Oh, wait a minute. You know what, G-Dubs? You've been saying when, I, when I, we started before, you were like, well, I couldn't sign it when I was using Streamlabs. Now I'm using Zoom. I want to hear what you got to say. Because you are, and I appreciate you because you are one of my most consistent fans. However... What the hell is yes-ish? That's like being a little bit pregnant. What do you mean yes-ish? <laughs> do you know how to date yes-ish? I really want to know what the hell that means. All right, Kimmy Cake says, I wish people had realistic expectation when it comes to dating. So many people are used to having things in an instant. No one wants to put in the work. We do live in a microwave society, and quite honestly, think about it. Whereas before, you had to basically either meet that person in church or um in the grocery store or whatever the case may be now you just pick up the phone log into whatever app uh you know that's at your disposal you don't you know you may have the free app or the free version or you might spend a little bit to get bumped up to tender gold who knows whatever the case may be all right so you log in and now you're just swiping left swiping right and people are you're com able to communicate with people it doesn't require a lot of work so therefore you're going to get small you know results so people expect, all right, if I swipe right, it's a match. Boom, we're talking. It's so much easier now. You're right. People don't have to put in the work. It's, it's, it's one of the sad byproducts of innovation, and it's, you, you're going to get diminishing returns when it comes to that. So I wholeheartedly agree with you on that. <laughs> I'm just saying, I need to know what the hell that yes-ish is. <laughs> All right. I utilize a no phone policy on dates. I love it. That's actually, you know what? Boom. Thank you. That is actually a great point. And that's something you have. If, if you know what it is you're, you, you want and the older you get, and if you're looking for certain results, you have to be intentional when it comes to getting those results. If you know that you want to be married, right? And for you to be married, ultimately, that's your goal. That's what the reason why you're going on this date. I'm, a, I'm physically attracted to the person, so I can actually see myself doing the beast with two backs with this person. Check. Oh, okay, I like this person's conversation. Check. How do I, like, how do I know I like the conversation? We're actually having a damn conversation because when that person picked their phone up, I was intentional and said, hey, you know what? Can you put your phone out for a few minutes? Just focus on this conversation. And you're being interesting and giving that person something to focus on. So if that person picks up their phone, you know that's a red flag. All right, cool. If you say, hey, can you put your phone down and focus on me a little bit? And they don't, yeah, you know what time it is, right? So if, if you have a policy, as it were, you know, your expectation is if this person asks me out on a date and then they're going to pick up the phone and talk to whoever or text whoever and they're wasting my time, no thank you. Because you've set expectations on what, what it is you want. And as you said, you know, the truth comes out because, yeah, they showed attention to you, but now they're really showing their true colors, who, who they really are, because they're not paying you any attention. G-Dub says, sometimes I think I do, then I realize real quick that I don't have the bandwidth for all the games. I'm rusty. Yo! Makes sense. Man, man, I haven't heard Black Planet in a minute. Y'all, Black Planet was the business. Oh, or Black Voices. Woo, shout out to Black Voices. Mm, mm, mm. Let me go back to g Dubs for a second. I'm going I'm to go back down in a minute. Uh, g Dub says, sometimes I think I do, then I realize real quick that I don't have the bandwidth for all the games. I'm rusty. Now, this is something that I'm hearing more and more and more is those that sentiment. Either there's a lot of games being played or there's a lack of consistency when it comes 
especially from men. That's one of the, the, the biggest cons- complaints that I hear from women, women when it comes to dating, right? Y'all, I'm always having conversations with different people, um, you know, in and, as I go in and about my day, I'm, we're always talking about different things. And like I said, those two things are the main complaints that I hear women wear, women hear from women. The lack of consistency and the fact that the men that are interested in them play games, meaning, oh, shit. I don't know, what the hell did I do? Just close the Zoom. Anyway, that's one of the biggest complaints that I hear from people, right? So I'm not sure why this issue is what it is. I'll be honest with you. I honestly do not know why. Um, this is one of them things that that the the, the more it the more it starts to show itself, the more of an issue we're going to have. Because I, 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 I understand, ladies, it's, it's, it's hard out there. I, I speak for my dudes as well that it's hard out there for us, but that's because things have really been out of balance for a long time. And until we get things back in sync, it's, it's not going to get any easier before it gets better. I, it, th- that's just the reality of, of what it is. You know what I'm saying? I... I I wish I could give a better answer than that, but that's just the reality of it. Things are not going to get any better until we're able to. Shit, I I, I don't even know what the hell. That's a tough one. I'm I'm not even going to lie, y'all. That is truly, truly a tough one. Here we go. So Kimmy Cake says, I don't date online. I haven't since my Black Planet, my space days. Um, only in person, I rely on energy. Yeah, yeah. Can they hold a conversation without being distracted? Yes. Now, how many successful dates have you been on, Kimmy, Cake, Kimmy Cakes? And what does it take, what do you consider to be... Um, What does it? What do you consider to be a um, a successful date? That's some, let, let me ask y'all that. What does? What do you consider to be a successful date? Uh, that is something I, I want to hear from y'all. What do y'all consider as to be a successful date? I know for me, a successful date. I mean, if it ends in um, intercoursing, then if, you know, well, that's another story. Um, <laughs> But what do you, <laughs> I'm sorry, but that's just funny. What do y'all consider to be a successful date? All right, real talk though. But for me, what I consider to be a, 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 a successful date is one where I'm left with the urge to, to want to see her again, to want to spend more time with her. That to me is like, yo, that was a good date. Where obviously going way back to what Latrice just said, the very you know one of the the first comments, to where it's like that person's put in the effort. They were paying attention to me. I was paying attention to them. To them, we learned more about each other. We were able to connect on certain things. Where you know I was able to get a a better feel for their sense of humor. They had a damn sense of humor because y'all know, and that's why I'm like, I'm not a big fan of texting when you're really getting to know somebody starting out because you cannot get a good grasp of that person's sense of humor because, you know, ah, there's certain things that don't translate into, into text, right? So let's say Kimmy Cake says a successful date to her. Oh no, what she needs um, for a successful date are commitment, consistency, chemistry is required. Let's see. G Dub says, "Great company, conversation, and chemistry with the hopes of another date." That's when, yo, that's some real shit. I agree with you. If you know, okay, like I said, you went out with a person that you are interested in seeing again, and you had great company. The conversation was good. There's definitely that chemistry. Obviously, you know you're physically attracted to them, yo. And then there's the anticipation of yet another date. Definitely. Um. Kimmy Cake says, 
Success, uh, successful is when I can't wait to see you again. Love it, no doubt. When I craved your time. You 100% right on that one. I'm just saying, there are certain things. It's like, yo, when you go out with a date, it's like, damn, this shit's popping. <laughs> That's some good shit. I love it. I have no idea as to why this link is working. It's like I hear the person trying to log in, trying to get into the Zoom call, but for whatever damn reason, it's not connecting. Yo, I hate if y'all have been trying to um, jump into this Zoom call. Y'all, I have no idea as to why it's not working. Test this thing out. This is insane. Why is this shit? I should play a matchmaker. You know what? Okay. G Dubs, what are three things you're looking for? If you could build a boo, what would you be looking for? All right. Let's see. Like for me, what I was looking for and I found, um, Intelligence, sense of humor, and personality. You notice that none of those things that I listed was physical because the physical for me was a given. If I'm not attracted to you, I don't feel like wasting my time. Because if I don't feel like having sex with you, I'm just wasting my time. Um, and Lord knows I was attracted to her. And you know what? This show is kind of therapeutic for me in a lot of ways. It's very therapeutic for me. Because I will be honest with y'all, there are times, y'all know I'm, I'm married, just got married, and there are times where I realize that I talk about the things that I want, that, I'm, that, that I, I share my opinion and so forth and so on, but there are a lot of times that it's, it's therapy for me because I realize, yo, there's some shit I need to get, I need to do. There are things I need to do better. And as we're talking about dating, I'm like, you know what? Ooh, she get on my damn nerves, but damn, I need to take her on a date. I need to show her that I care about her. I need to, to do those things. So as I'm sitting there listening to, my, listening to myself yap, I realize, you know what? I got to do certain things. So g Dub, she says humor, emotional stability, intelligent, emotional stability? What you saying? You want no crazy people? <laughs> Sad thing is, though, that goes back to the WAP. <laughs> Y'all women would make a man go crazy. I'm just saying. That's y'all's fault. Y'all got that thing. That'll drive us insane. Anyway, Kibby Cake says, make me smile and forget that anyone else is around. For sure. Yo, that is a great feeling when the world is small, where it's just y'all two on that date, and no matter all of the bullshit that's going, around, going you know, on around you, that person in front of you has your attention. That's a beautiful feeling. That is a beautiful feeling where you can feel like y'all are alone in a room full of room full of people. Yeah, that's that real shit. However, I will say this though. I will say this. I like that, but going back to your comment about the microwave society, do you sometimes think that if it doesn't happen on the first date, if you don't get that feeling on the first date, do you say, all right, the hell with it, I'm gonna give up on this one, or do you keep trying? You know, because a lot of times I, I think that because going back to the whole thing about the phones, right? We see all of these things, hashtag relationship goals and people posting all of these perfect journeys, you know, going all over the world and traveling. It's like, oh my God, they in love and knowing damn well they can't stand each other. So you think that if I don't have that, I don't want it. I've seen that kind of, that kind of, those kind of posts so, so much. And it's like, no, nah, them people, they've been together 20 years. So, of course, they, they posting like that. Of course, they're, you know, they've, they've been through all that rough shit. So you cannot expect that on the first date. I've, 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 God, I've seen that, you know, the hashtag relationship goals. Man, no, nah, but see, that's just it. You, you can't on one hand say that, okay, ooh, Kimmy Cakes. Come on now. Oh, I love it. All right. Right here, you're saying you want someone that, that makes you smile and forget and so forth, right? However, if that person, yeah. Okay, but if that person doesn't, so if, if you don't have that feeling on the very, on say the first date, 
Oh, I'm not calling you out. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Let's see. G Dub says, "Oh no, been there and done that. My project management days are over, yo." I'm telling you, y'all. That's why having those conversations early up front before even the first date and not just texting and shit, but having them conversations will get that shit out in the open quick because you realize, yo, that's a problem. That is a problem. Y'all know like um, what I was talking about on Ready to Love. That's, that's the show. There's one particular character right now, one of the, the ladies on the show. Man, them red flags flapping so hard in the breeze. Whew. You have them conversations, you realize that, yo, something is wrong with that person, and you get the hell on. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Let's see. If I get a red flag, I, st I skate quick. That's my weakness. Um. As we get older, I think that as we get older, we take on more pain because we've been exposed to more pain, especially if you're older, uh, as you've gotten older, you're either single, divorced, whatever the case may be. You take on, you, 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 you take on, you've been through so much and either you have been through it personally or you are close to someone that has. And then what happens is your defenses go up quick. So what you say is like, mm -mm, I'm not about, to, I see, yeah, you're exhibiting that behavior. Now nah, I'm going to, I'm going to go left real quick. And then what happens is you actually dip out because what you perceive may be a red flag is just that person putting on a red shirt. And I think that what happens so many times, and I'm not saying you specifically, uh, Kimmy Cakes, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is what may look like a red flag is not necessarily the case. And because we want to protect ourselves, because we're like, yo, I'm not going through that bullshit because Tyrone did some shit back in the past, because Tyquisha did some shit back in the past. No, nah, I'm good. I'm, I'm going to bypass that. When in reality, that's not the case. That's one of the many reasons why I'm always talking about getting therapy before you get into a relationship. If you get out of a bad relationship or if you just get out of a relationship, period, where you think things were going perfectly, but the other person is not, they dip. Or you know that that person's on some bullshit. So you say, you know what? I can do bad by myself. So you dip. Whatever the case may be, you've got to get relationships because what happens is if you stay in that relationship for too long, if you stay in that situation for too long, what you start to see is that everything looks like red flags because you've got on red colored glasses because you've been hurt for so long. So all of those things definitely, you know, definitely do play a part in what it is you're looking for. All right. So I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm fully aware when you've been hurt, you've been, you've been hurt. Let's see. Michelle, she says for me, I already know the answer is no, but just but just curious as to what y'all think. Um, oh, here we go. I'm sorry. To your point, maybe there's no sexual spark just yet on the first date. Can sexual attraction not grow? Hell no. 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 I'm sorry. The answer to me is no. Y'all let me know what you think. That's a great question, Michelle. Like What we've been talking about, one of the things that we've been talking about is and let me pull them back up we've been talking about these dating rules right do you know how to date that's the topic the topic tonight's topic tonight's conversation has been do you know how to date so one of the things that we have been talking about is you know we've we've been talking about different dating rules and one of the rules that I have been talking about is do date people that you like and are attracted to, meaning you're attracted to the person specifically because we're grown. You're attracted to that person sexually. In other words, for my fellas, my, my heterosexual fellas, to be clear, she got that, the, the, the chesticles popping. 
She got the donkey for days, them thick thighs, or however you like your women. You may like them slim thick. You may just like them slim, whatever. You, all you know is that, yes, sir, the blood is flowing. You're attracted to her. To my ladies, whatever the hell it is y'all like, whether you like his arms, you like his legs, he's wearing them gray sweatpants that y'all like so much, which is just disrespectful, by the way, for us brothers. That, anyway, I'm, anyway <clears throat> excuse me. All I'm saying is if you're not attracted to that person, if you are not physically attracted to that person, don't go out with them because it's that is not something that is going to grow over time. Because just like the old saying goes, familiarity breeds contempt. And the more you see a person, the more you hang out with them and they got that funky breath or they fart or they do all that. Well, everybody farts, but you know what I'm saying? And it's like, God darn, this person is, yeah. People tend to get less attractive over time. That's just a fact of the matter. You know, the more you get to know them, you realize, ugh. So it's one of those things, yeah, sexual attraction, physical attraction does not grow over time. It does not. g Dubs, you're telling me, I'm going to call you out on this one. You're telling me that over time, you're going to be like, you know what, I'm going to give him some? No. You're going to be like, you know what, I'm going to give him some. It ain't going to be like, oh. I'm gonna give him some. It's different. It's, it's it, the physical attraction. You just re, you may learn to love somebody over time. You may be you may learn to really appreciate who that person is. But if you're not physically attracted from jump, it's gonna make all of those things even worse. It's gonna make everything even worse. Lorenzo, what's going on, my man? Thank you for joining the conversation. Tonight's conversation is, do you know how to date? Miss Brown, welcome to the conversation, ma'am. Thank you for joining the, the, the chat. Like I just said, tonight's conversation is, uh, do you know how to date? So Miss Brown says, Michelle Roberts, to be honest, I know within the first 10 minutes whether I'm going to give up the cookie as long as he doesn't do something. Yo, us dudes, we will talk ourselves out of the twat in a minute. Like Cheryl, uh, Miss Brown just said right here. Yo, we know, y'all women know whether you're like, you know what? I might give him some. And then we just get to talking and y'all be like, ugh, I might still give him some because he cute. Then we just get to talking. It's like, shit, I ain't giving him shit. We will talk ourselves out of the twat in a minute. I'm just saying. What'd G-Dub say? Uh, there you go. There has to be some attraction. I'm saying, do not go out on a date with someone that you are not attracted to. Y'all, that simple rule will eliminate a whole lot of friggin' headache. I'm telling y'all, that simple rule will eliminate a whole lot of headache. Now, don't, everybody's not built like Denzel. Not every dude has got a 12-inch dick. Not every woman has got the perfect body. So therefore, you cannot go into certain situations with unrealistic expectations. However, if you know that you're attracted to that person, there is some level of physical attraction you like their smile, you, uh, you like her eyes, you like them thighs, you like the, the breasticles, whatever the case may be. There is some level of physical attraction. That, at a minimum, has to be there. Ladies, if you're not attracted to the dude to where you know that you are later on, you're sooner or later, there will be intercourse and going down. Don't go out on, on, on a date with him. I don't give a damn how big his wallet is. I don't give a damn if he's six. Well, y'all like tall dudes. I'm just jealous of that shit anyway. Anyway, if, <laughs> all I'm saying is if you are not physically attracted to that individual, do not go out with a date on him. That's going to save you so much headache. I'm telling you. Uh, let's see. Michelle says the answer is no, but I also know that people can continuously go after a certain body type even to their own detriment. <sighs> Fellas, how many of y'all been blinded by the booty? I'm just saying. Never trust a big button to smile. I'm telling you, it happens. 
Let me see. Michelle says, but wait, though. If, as we get older, we should reconsider reevaluating our red flags, can't people also reevaluate their sexual preference? No. Hell no. Especially as you get older, you like what you like. Now, what may happen is you'd be like, you know what? Yeah, I get it. I want to do that 6'3", but you know what? That 5'9", man over there, he, he, he seems cute. He actually is cute. You know what? I'll give him some. Yeah, you, you, you. it's not necessarily you're changing what you're attracted to. You just realize that, you know what? Uh, my, my expectations were set a little too high, and let me have some more realistic expectations. And you realize, you know what? He's all right, but you're still attracted to that person. I'm not saying for you to settle for somebody. By no means do you settle because ain't nobody wants no backup booty. I'm saying you don't do that. What I'm saying is you realize, you know what? I, I keep saying, I, for instance, ladies, I keep saying I want a woman, a dude that's six five. My fellas, y'all keep saying, well, you know what? She better be built like an Instagram model or else. I, no, you realize, you know what? Let me set some realistic, ex, realistic expectations and go after that. Secret Lives of Single Women. Now, that's a name. I fucks with that. Let's see. <laughs> we might want to give him some because we're horny as fuck and just need the, need the, the peen. I get it. We all have needs. We all have desires. However, if you have a twat, it's not that hard for you to get satisfied. Ladies, I hate to say it. Well, not actually, it's just, it's a fact of life. It's easier for y'all to get peen than it is for us to get twat. It's simple as that. It's easier for you ladies to get satisfied sexually. Now, don't get me wrong. The dick down may not be the best, but if you want to get sex, in fact, shit, let's talk about it. Ooh, let's talk about it. Let me get comfortable. Let's talk about it. Ladies. Every last one of y'all, even my married ladies out there, y'all know you got some backup, backup um, um, peen somewhere. You got that one dude that you still got his number saved that you know damn well will blow your back out anytime you want to. I don't give a shit even if you married, been married 20 years. Y'all know damn well that if you wanted to get the back blown out, there is a number that you can call Mr. Dick'em Down Don or whatever the hell his name is, you know. Big Dick Bob or whatever the hell. He's saved in your phone somewhere that if you wanted to reach out and touch, he will reach out and touch. So don't get it twisted, ladies. Y'all know damn well that if you wanted to get it, you could get it. Y'all know good and damn well. Y'all can walk out there on a sunshiny day and dudes are going to start throwing the peen at you. Throwing it. Hey, ma. Throwing it. Hey, good looking. Throwing it. <laughs> throwing it. Hey, sexy. Throwing it. Y'all know good and damn well. If you wanted it, you could have it. If you wanted it, you could have it. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. If you wanted to get your back blown out, ladies, you can do that. If you, because us dudes, like I said, all it takes is a pulse. You ain't got to have a conversation. Just have a pulse and the ability to consent. If you can say yes, we will say yes. It's not that hard. Us dudes, I'm just saying, it's easy for y'all. It's easy. Now, let me go back to... Michelle said, I know plenty of ugly ass men, <laughs> ugly ass, <laughs> ugly ass, <laughs> ugly ass men that, that wore a beautiful woman down. I have seen some couples, right? Jay-Z and Beyonce, let's, that's like the up there, but there are also some, there's some regular ass people, you're like, how the hell is that chick with that dude? <laughs> What I'm trying to, th there's this one particular movie where basically, I'm trying to find the right way to word this. There have been certain, y'all let me know if you've been in this situation, right? Where there's this person that's in your orbit. You're aware of them, but you're, you, you don't see them. You're aware of them, but you don't see them. So let me let me po pose a scenario based on what Michelle is saying right here. An ugly ass man that wore a beautiful woman down. All right. 
In fact, yeah, fuck it. I used to work at a McDonald's on Wesley Chapel Road here in, Atlanta, in, in Decatur, Georgia, back in high school, right? And one, um, I'll never forget, there was this one night in particular. There was this one chick that I was crushing on the whole time. You know, my coworker back there or whatever, right? She went to Cedar Grove High School. I went to Columbia High, right? So we were in two different sides of the city. She was way the hell over there, and I was over here. And every time, you know, the only, the only time our worlds intersected was, was at McDonald's, right? And she only worked on the weekends and because, you know, you know, she was smart, whereas, you know, whatever. Anyway, my black ass, I was getting it. I wanted the money and play football. Anyway, <laughs> so I was like, damn, she's cute as shit. But we never connected beyond work because she was at school on one side of town. I was at another. I had her. We had each other's number, but we just never really talked. No, that's not true. I didn't have her number. Now, we were in each other's orbit. I was aware of her, but she wasn't necessarily aware of me. Now, there was flirting at work or whatever, but outside of that, not so much. So there was one night in particular, I remember it to this day. It, all my McDonald's workers, if you ever worked at McDonald's, you know, at the end of the night as you're cleaning up, you take the big ass container, uh, the, the, the fry bin, and you got to take it out to the back and lift it. So. And back then, I was also going by my first name. So I'll never forget. She was like, hey, Errol, it was her job to clean out the fry bin. She's like, yo, Chris, can you come and grab this for me and take it to the back? I was like, yeah, all right, whatever, I got you. So I came and lifted it up. She walked up behind me, and she was trying to go around me. And in doing so, she put her hands on the back of my, my arms, my triceps, as I'm lifting, this, lifting the, the thing up. And I, 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 I'll never forget it to this day. She squeezed, and she's like, oh, shit. She squeezed again, so in, 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 what happened was her hand kind of lingered a little bit on the back of my arm, and I heard her go, oh. Next thing I know, she's like, at the end of that same night, she's like, hey, what's your number? And we exchanged numbers, and we talked for a little bit. I ended up graduating high school, going in the military, so nothing really happened there. But I am what you would call a medium ugly man. She is a, was, especially back then, she was cute as shit. However... It wasn't until I came into focus and something about me attracted her and I became physically attractive that she was like, oh, oh, I see you. And things happen. So it's not a matter of wearing her down. It's a matter of like, you know what? I got you. I got you. So all I'm saying is, it's not a matter of you wearing that person down. It's a matter of them coming into focus. And at the end of the day, that person becomes attractive physically to the other person. It could be something as simple as your, your tire's flat. The dude shows up, changes your tire. And you're like, oh, shit, my hero. He's now attractive. So, yeah, dude's ugly as shit, basic looking dude. And you're like, well, how the hell did they link up? He did something to become, to come into focus and become physically attracted to him. Let's see. Michelle says, what did Miss Brown say? I believe women can regress in sexual preferences. Maybe not men, but we definitely can't regress in a lifestyle. What do you mean by regress in sexual preferences? That's an interesting comment. First of all, I don't need to have a, I don't, of course, y'all women, I'm telling you, hmm, hmm, okay, she says, first of all, I don't need to have a number saved, I just have to walk outside if I was so inclined, but the difference with that is, if you, first of all, that's insulting, um, second of all, if Yes, you can walk outside and meet someone new, but you don't know necessarily what they're going to deliver. All I'm saying is you have that one guy that you have intertwined with in the past and his number is still in your phone. So you at least it's the, the, the devil that you know versus the potential that you don't. That's, what, that's all I'm saying. Let's see. Uh, Secret Lies of Sigma Women says, I beg to differ. Some of the guys I run into can't separate sex from their feelings. Yeah, of course not. Because our dick is our feelings. It, it's... If we just meet you, we don't have feelings for you. We just feel the blood flow down down low. That's it. Sometimes we just want the peen, and they may want something else. Um, I hate to say, that may be the power of your poon. Basically, it sounds like, because the dudes, 
it I'm sure it starts out sexually where they're like, okay, let's do this. And then sooner or later, they probably looked at you and that one single tear went down their face and they're like, God damn, I need this. I need her in my life. Or I don't need that. I don't need, I don't want nobody else having something as magnificent as that. That could very well be it. I'm just saying the power of the poon might have a lot to do with it. Let's see. What did Michelle say? Uh, I've always been of the opinion that men are more emotional than women. Yeah, we are. Hell yeah, we are. You know, they fans of butts about that. Whether we want to admit it or not, women are way more, men are way more emotional than women. That's why you have murder suicides and dumb shit like that. Men are, especially if they're unbalanced, men are way more emotional than, than women. We don't claim it, but it's, it's, it's a fact. That's why having a, one of the reasons, one of the things that happens when you have a good woman, and as a man that has a good woman, I can say this, is once you've reached a certain level of balance, having a good woman in your life brings you back to center. Because if not, most men, we're all over the place, you know, because we run on passion. In order to do certain things, to be the kind of men that we have to do, we have to have that drive. And in order to have that drive, you, that drive is, is, is emotionally driven by something. Either I want to succeed because I want to, to, to rule the world, so therefore I'm driven by the emotion of power. Either I want to succeed because of some trauma where I was teased back in high school because you know I was a skinny dude, so now I'm a pump weight until I freaking swole up so big I can't wipe my own ass and I got you know whatever the case may be we are driven by something what happens is we meet a woman that brings us back to center so that's why when when a man meets a woman that can center him and allow his allow him to think rationally as opposed to emotionally men then can then focus and move more in tune because now they're, they're able to keep moving towards their, their mission, knowing that the woman behind them is going to support them in, by keeping them centered. It, it's, it's, it's an interesting dynamic for sure. Secret lies of a woman says, I have that number saved, but they are too toxic. The bottom line is, sooner or later, that toxicity is going to wear down when that thing starts hollering and you got the number saved. If you were to marry, if you were to find your perfect husband right now, I don't know if you're married or not. If your husband was to be like, hey, are you going to delete that number? Hell no. Hell no, you're not. Michelle says, I can't potentially accidentally bring any ugly ass baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit <laughs> oh man y'all are silly i'm about to wrap this conversation up though <laughs> um Miss <laughs> Brown says, but I can't be with no straight up ugly ass man, but willing to. How do you negotiate? What is there? Ne what is a negotiation? What is there to negotiate? I'm really curious about that. What is a negotiation? <laughs> oh, y'all are silly. Y'all are absolutely silly. Whew. Man, it has been. I have no idea as to why this shit is not working. You know what? Let me try this because invite, copy invite link. Go here. Don't know why this friggin' link is not working. It's like I I'm not sure what's going on. Why this the Zoom link isn't working? I've had two people, at a minimum, that I've heard in my ear pop in and try to join, but when I click up, oh, click over, they're gone. Anyway, uh, let's see what we got. Michelle says, yeah, but we're tired of that. We are more than we are more than being y'all's emotional housing shelter. It's 2021. It's time for men to do the work of healing. Mm, as long as there's a world, there's always going to be be pain. And to a certain extent, I agree with you. 
we do have to heal. We do have to embrace our, our own mental and emotional health. But at the same time, women have since, you know, if you're a Christian, there's a reason why y'all are called our help meet. Um, that's just a part of being in relationship. Men are built a certain way. Like we said, men are hunters. If you're, go if you're going out hunting, you're going to be, you know, sometimes that the, what you're hunting is going to fight back. Or you're gonna, if you're hunting a certain prey in order to bring it back home to feed the family, you're gonna cross through those sticker bushes. You're gonna, you know, traverse through um, rocky uh, creeks or whatever, cutting up your feet. And then once you go back home, you gotta be healed. So you can't go out and hunt and then come home and have to heal yourself up. You, you went out, not only killed the bacon, but you done brought it back home and now you got to heal yourself just to go back out. It's, it's, it's a two-way street, and, and I think once both, of, both the men and the women find ways to take care of each other, and that means that we're operating in our specific spaces, men are operating in masculine spaces, women are operating in feminine spaces, and once that is back in balance, once that is back in harmony, and things are going the way they should, then that's when both men and women are doing much better i know i know you I, I get it i get it but that's one of the reasons why things are out of balance because it is easy to get tired of people's shit. i get it i really do but at the same time you know michelle says we're tired of all y'all shit. straight up i get it men nowadays are definitely uh, flawed creatures and I'm not going to be the so, so are y'all, but at the same time, it's, it's just who it, it's. It's one of those things where he just did it again. It's, it's one of those things where we have to be in harmony. We have to be in balance. We just have to be in balance. Um, I know it's frustrating for y'all women out there when it comes, and that's why I'm having this conversation, y'all. That's why we're talking about dating. That's why, you know, do we know how to date? Things have got to be back in balance. Things have got to be in harmony um, for us to, one, to go on to, to start the dating process as we move through the different stages of relationship. I mean, you've got to know how to, one, to ask, okay, how do I go on a date? OK, so just to it's one of those things where we're asking those questions, you know. There's certain basic principles, certain basic tenets, no matter what it is you're into, that you've got to, to, to be able to to do. And we've talked about it a couple, you know, as far as these things right here. Do try to look your best and be punctual on dates. Do have fun when dating. Do flatter and compliment your date. Be interesting and interested. Y'all, that just means put your damn phone down. You would be surprised how much better dating would be or be going on a date would be if you put your damn phone down. Number five, if you don't, if you don't want to, excuse me, if you don't want to see someone again, just let them know in the nicest way possible. Number six, date the type of people you like and are attracted to. Like I said, if you do not want to have sex with them, do not go out on a date with them. Sexual attraction is not something that builds up over time. It actually diminishes because, like I said, us dudes, we will talk ourselves out of the twat. And y'all women going to be like, you know what? I might have given him some, but no, thank you. I don't like the way his nose hairs wiggle when he breathes or some stupid shit. It doesn't matter. All right. Sexual attraction is not something that builds up over time. Uh, number six, do date the type of people. Uh, excuse me. Number seven, do stay positive even when dates don't end well. Shit happens. Y'all had a great date and then you walk back out to the car. There's a boot on it. You know, you had an interesting evening and then, you, you know, it's like, oh, shit. Um, now, I will say this. If that person didn't bring their damn wallet, yeah. But anyway, <laughs> stay positive. Uh, number eight, allow dating to take you places you always wanted to visit in your city. Like I said, there's a simple website called eventbrite.com. You go there, type in your city name, and there's going to be a list of activities that are going to be popping off in your city based on the conversations that you had with that person. Because as I said, put your... Before you, you know, when you meet someone and you're starting to, to, to be with them, 
Don't text all the damn time. Pick up the phone and call them. Ask them, what's a good time for me to call you? And then you call that person, and then y'all develop something. You ask questions and elicit, you know, co- with the conversation that comes from those questions, you can then plan an event or an activity that both of y'all are going to be, that y'all can enjoy in your city. Dating requires, number nine, dating requires positive action, so go out and meet people. Y'all, I get it. It's convenient as hell having that cell phone. You can go to, like, to any number of dating sites. We talked about MySpace. We talked about Black Planet, Christian Mingle, uh, Tinder, um, Plenty of Fish, Grinder, um, shit, you, you name it. They're out there, right? Uh, Match, eHarmony, whatever you, you th- there are so many different dating sites. However, you got to get out. I know COVID, I know coronavirus and all that other stuff. I get it. But if you want to, if you want to have a certain results, certain expectations, you've got to be intentional in your pursuit of those results. So you have to be positive in that pursuit. Get out, meet people. You know, you know the old thing where you see somebody at the grocery store or in church or just out and about at a party, whatever the case may be get out we're getting into the holiday season so people are going to be it's going to be thanksgiving it's going to be christmas parties and holiday parties and shit like that don't be the person be like i don't feel like going to no holiday party man go get out meet people by going out you've got to be intentional if that's what you want uh number 10 do surround yourself with positive like-minded people get out meet people and stop saying if a if a couple says hey why don't you come with us to this party don't be like mm, i don't want to do that i don't want to be the third wheel or be boo- y'all are booed up that's stupid if they're inviting you to a party where you can go out and meet positive like-minded people then that's what you need to do get out if you want to have that result you've got to do it the, those are some of the basic things that it takes in order to get the the kind of results that you say you want when it comes to relationship uh miss brown says at michelle okay um i look at like my money i offer from interest keep principal protected untouched unless it's realized potential of fair exchange yeah that's something true now sex is a fair exchange there are a lot of people say you know what I gave him this. No, the hell you didn't. You got you got some pipe and he got some poon. It is what it is. Anyway, y'all, I want to thank y'all so much for joining me tonight. This was an interesting conversation. Um, had a little hiccup at the start. I blame YouTube. But at the end of the day, we had a great conversation, man. I really, really, really appreciate y'all joining the show. Thank y'all so much. Thank y'all so much for joining this conversation. Um, as always, y'all, you know, I do my ready to love reviews. So if you have not follow me on Twitter at author Christopher Marklin.com as you, what the hell am I saying? Well, that's my website, Christopher Marklin.com, but follow me on Twitter at author underscore Chris M that's a U T H O R underscore Chris M. Cause I do live tweet during the ready to love show this Friday and every other Friday as well. And then I also do my reviews. The link to the review is in the comment section below. Once again, y'all have a great weekend. Y'all stay great rest of your week. I should say y'all stay determined. Have a good one. Y'all.